Good morning. It's good to see y'all here today. I hope you're doing well. I hope you've had a good week. Um, I'm looking forward to this uh, new week ahead. I'm thankful for Joey for preaching for me uh, last Sunday. Um, I was with my mom and dad on their 50th anniversary. If you saw the pictures on Facebook, I did a renewal of vows for them on Saturday, and we had a big party. And then um, I preached for him on Sunday, and it was really good. I will say, um, one of the older women, as she was leaving, she, she looked at my dad, and I was standing beside him, and she said, Well, there's one thing you can learn from your son, how to do a 20-minute sermon. And uh, I, I said, okay, Dad. I said, my sermon was actually about 30 minutes long, but, but uh, my dad is long-winded. And uh, so she thought that was good, so I thought that was funny. Um, but it is good to be back home with my church family. Um, I'm excited about things that are coming up, and I, I want to stand and, and invite God to be a part of our time together. And then I want us to sit back down. I'm going to talk about some of those, and then we'll start with our opening him. So let's stand in honor of God as we invite him to be a part of our time this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time that we can come together and worship you. I thank you for this church family that I'm a part of. I thank you for the way you move and work in each one of them and the way that they represent you, God, outside of the walls of this building. For the church is not this building, it's the people. And I'm so thankful for our people today. God, I just pray that you would be glorified and lifted up, honored in our service today and all that we do. Um, in the songs that we sing, the hymns, um, in your word that we read. God, may you be glorified in all of it. We pray these things, trusting and hoping in you. We love you, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. As far as announcements goes, if you look to up and coming events... Wednesday, October the 23rd at 6.30, um, we're going to be having a Christmas party for the choir. Um, if you like Christmas, if you like to sing, um, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to come and uh, hear the Christmas cantata, have a time of fellowship. Um, we've got plenty of room up here for more folks, and we would love for you to come and be a part of this time together. Um, I've told the, the 8.30 service you know, some of them, um, they come to that service and they don't come here to sing, um, but they can come to that. This cantata is going to be an evening cantata. And so um, if you know people in our community that like to sing and maybe their church doesn't do a cantata, I would invite them to come and, and, and sing with us. We'd love for them to do that. Um, so that's for, to know about the Christmas uh, cantata come August the 23rd at 6.30. Then you'll know... Uh, August the 27th, um, we've purposely not been doing things on Sunday because we have some meetings that we need to have, and the 27th is kind of the day we're going to have those meetings. At 3 p.m., SPRC is going to be meeting. Um, we need to kind of meet as we begin the beginning of this, this new year as school starts. And uh, so we'll be meeting at 3, and then following that, we're going to have our church council meeting uh, at 4 o'clock. Now, this is the first kind of meeting that we're going to have as the Leesburg Methodist Church. Um, everyone is welcome to come and be a part of this time. You're going to hear some different reports from our groups and also kind of hear some words as we move forward and where we're going and, and how we're going to get there. So I hope you'll come be a part of that time and that meeting. Um, mo Monday, August the 28th is line dancing. That information is there. And then if you'll notice on the perforated part, our Wednesday nights are going to look a little different. And Wednesday the 6th, will be our first one, and on that first one, we're going to have a spaghetti supper, and it's going to be a donation kind of thing. You come, and you can donate money if you want to. We'll help cover the cost, but this is going to be an hour we're going to talk about how things are different, what we're going to have available for you to be a part of. Um, we would love for you to come and be a part of this. Children and youth will separate out, and, and I'll stand there with the adults, and we're going to talk about the options we have for you to come and be a part of the Bible studies on Wednesday night. Um, but we do want to kick off with a meal. Um, one of the things that's going to be changing um, is the meal aspect of it. So please come to hear that information. Um, we'll have a meal together and then talk about those things. Um, that's the first Wednesday night, and you can put your information there for that. Um, then you also see two things in your bulletin. One is disaster relief for fire in Maui. 
Um, that information, the website is right there. You can go to that. Um, I, I think the death rate has, has gone up since this information was given. Um, but the Global Methodist Church is uh, trying to help, and, and they provided this place where you can give, and 100% of what you give goes to Maui in the efforts to help. If you've seen pictures of Maui, it looks like a war zone. Um, and so this is a wonderful way for you to help that. And the other thing kind of goes along with our Wednesday night and, and just where we're going as a church. Um, we haven't done this in a long time, and so we've got a little questionnaire um, in the bulletin. You can fill that out if you want to now. Turn it in during the offering time. But we've also sent out an email with a link, and so with the, with the one that you can do online. Please don't do it twice. We don't want the numbers to be skewed. Um, you don't have to put your name on this. So if, if you're comfortable doing stuff online, then go online and fill that out, and that information will get back to us. But if you're not, you can fill this paper out and turn that in, and we'll, we'll add that information as well. But we just kind of want to see where people are. We want to see how you're feeling about the church, maybe the direction we're going, is what we're doing, what, what we want to be doing, or, or, or we want to be doing some different things. So this information is there, and we're going to gather that again for you. And then finally, um, today I'm going to be talking about church membership and the idea of whether or not church membership is a biblical concept, which I think it is. But what I want to do is I, I want us to move from the idea that membership is a biblical concept to looking at the membership vows of the Global Methodist Church. Um, some of you have been members of the Leesburg Meth United Methodist Church for a long time. Do you remember the vows that you said so long ago? Some people say, yeah. Some people say, I have no recollection of what they were. And, and that's probably to be expected. But I think as members, we need to understand what do the vows say? Are they biblical? And, and do we mean them? And are we living into those vows that we make um, before God and before our brothers and sisters? And so my heart for this is we're going to move through this series. We're going to also talk about baptism in the midst of this. And we're going to get to October the 29th. October the 29th is going to be um, a, a membership renewal day and remembering your baptism day. So there'll be no sermon on the 29th. We're going to go through all these membership vows. And then those of you that are ready and want to do this, we're going to renew our vow before God. And we are going to move into this new place as the Leesburg Methodist Church, having renewed our vows. And we're going to live into those vows and do what God is calling us to do. Now, this is going to be a Sunday where people who are not members can join if they want to. I've already got a couple people I'm talking to that want to join on that day. So that's awesome. Um, I, I hope there's more. Um, it'll also be a day if you've never been baptized, you can get baptized on that day. And we'll do it as others are remembering their baptism. You'll get baptized and become a member of our church. I want you to think of this as adult confirmation, okay? Um, we're going through what it means to be a member of of a church. And so I'm looking forward to this. Now mixed in to this sermon series, um, one Sunday I will be out um, in October, fall break, so I'll be out that Sunday. But we are going to have September the 10th, a mission Sunday. And I want to talk to you about that. I know we got a lot of stuff that we're talking about, but I want to lift this up to you. This is going to be a special Sunday. We have a guest speaker coming. Um, and he is a part of a ministry, Celebrate Recovery. Uh, Clay is going to come and talk to us. Um, but we're going to have a mission fair. Um, as we sat down as the mission team, we started looking at things that we do as a church, and we missed a bunch. Like we had maybe four or five, and there's so many more things that this church is a part of when you think about missions going outside of ourselves. And so we're going to have booths set up where you can go and get information about what our church is doing, see what those ministries are all about. We'll have a special guest speaker, and then we'll have no Sunday school because the mission fair will be going on throughout Sunday school. We'll have one service that day, so we'll all worship together. And then after the service, we're going to have a meal. And so on, in September, make a note, the first Sunday will be um, our communion Sunday, and we will not have a meal on the first Sunday like we normally do because of Mission Sunday. We'll be giving this information out more, but I wanted to kind of go over it this morning. Some of you may be going, what did he just say? Um, so please ask uh, some folks, but, but we're looking forward to this. I'm excited about September the 10th. I hope that you'll attend, invite others to attend, um, and, and you can do that by giving them this card. This card doesn't say anything about Mission Sunday, 
But it talks about the sermon series that we're starting up. And it's got the dates of when it will be going through. And it's got the times and it's got the places. And so I've made a bunch of these cards. They're at every exit. Um, you can get these cards. You can hand them out to people if you work. And you have a place where you can put them down. Put them down. Um, but just invite folks. Give them this card and say, we're starting a sermon series. We'd love for you to come. If they ask you what it's about, say it's about membership of a church and, and what that's all about. But we'd love for you to come and be a part of that. So these are out there. If we run out, I'll make more if we need to. Um, I know that's a lot of information, but I wanted to pass that on. So now we'll continue on with our service. Miss Carlin, come and lead us. Morning. Um, our opening hymn is number 388. Can y'all hear me? Okay. Um, the church is one foundation. I'm just sitting listening to Lee talk about all that's uh, going on and the potential for what we hope will continue and grow and in our local church right here. But this song is about the Lord's church. As believers, we, you know, we're we're already a member of that, and uh, what that foundation is built on is, of course, Jesus Christ, and uh, so we, you know, in turn, build our church on that foundation. But this is just a great song, uh, and I think we're going to sing all the verses. So let's stand and sing. As we go to the Lord for a time of prayer, um, your bulletin has a place for you to tear it off, and you can put any need that you have on that. 
And I hope that you are using that. For those who are watching this service, we record it every Sunday. We're glad that you're watching it. Um, if you have any prayer need, you can email the church secretary. You can go on our website, and you can find a place that you can put any prayer need that you might have. And we want to be faithful to be praying. Uh, there's power in prayer, right? Is that true? Do y'all believe that? There is power in prayer. And where would we be without people who have prayed for us um, over, over the course of, of our lives, right? And so we do this every Sunday. Um, this is an opportunity not for you to hear me pray, but for you to pray along with me as together we lift our prayers to God. Um, honestly, I would love for you not even to know what I prayed because you prayed yourself and, and you weren't listening to me. You were talking to God. That's what this time is all about. Um, we have a lot of folks that we want to be praying for. Um, Billy Mann and Betty Tumlin, both of those are um, in nursing homes at this point, rehabbing. Billy Mann is in, um, uh, where's she at, y'all? Carrollton, thank you. She's in Carrollton where her um, daughter and uh, son live, and uh, she broke her leg right of her knee replacement. Um, it, it's a very difficult uh, break, and it's hard to kind of get over. Um, she had gotten to the place where she was going to be rehab, and she was excited, and then she got COVID. So she had to wait 10 days, and so just praying that she can get to a place where she can do that rehab. Miss Betty broke her shoulder. Um, they did not have to do surgery, thank goodness, but she's also in a nursing home doing rehab, um, and she will be there for about at least eight weeks until she can even begin to move her arm. Um, but if you've ever met Miss Betty, she could be in the worst place that you could possibly give her, and she would tell you that it's, it's a great place. She is just one of those people, when you go to try to talk to her, she, uplifts, she, she lifts your heart. And so it's just, um, just pray for the both of them, uh, longtime members of our church, um, just dear people, and, and they just need prayer for, for them. So be keeping uh, thoughts of them. We got a lot of others that we're praying for, people on our prayer list. Um, things that you've reached out, um, people that we're praying for that have gone through or are going through difficult times. Um, so please uh, put your need down, and we will be faithful to be praying for that need. Let's have a moment of silence as we gather our thoughts together, and I'll lead us in our morning prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne this morning, I'm thankful for this old hymn that we just sang. The church is one foundation. God, if, if, if there is a church out there that believes Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to the Father but by him, if there is a church out there that believes Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins so that we might have fellowship with God, um, if there is a church out there that believes that God is the creator of all things and that there is one true God, then, Lord, we are combined and we are all a part of that foundation. I just pray, Lord, that that foundation, we would be reminded that that foundation is strong and secure. And it will never break apart, no matter what we go through, no matter what we've been through. It is there for us. And we are so thankful today for the truth of that. God, for your people, um, we lift up these that we've named this morning and those that are on the prayer list. You know every single name. You know every single need. You know the unspoken and the people that have those unspoken and what they are, God, this morning. And in fact, you've already begun to work in those circumstances as only you can. God, we pray for peace. We pray for guidance and wisdom. Lord, we pray for all of them and just lift them up. God, we thank you for this church that we're part of. As we start this new sermon series on what it means to be a member, I pray, God, that you would go before us and, Lord, that you would bring folks to be a part of this, maybe longtime members that have not been in a long time, maybe new people who are searching for a place uh, to, to call home. Whatever, Lord, I just pray that you would go before and you would prepare our hearts as we start this series. Because, Lord, I believe you want to do something amazing in this church. As we begin this new chapter with a new name, new hymn books, new direction, new frame of mind, God, renew us as we renew our vows and prepare to do what you've called us to do, to be faithful to that calling, to be faithful to the vows that we've made, most importantly to you. Lord, all these things we pray and trust in you this morning. We love you, Father. We are so thankful for Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Be with us in the rest of this service, we pray, God, in your very precious name. Amen. All right.
Our next hymn is number 396 in your book or it'll be on the screen. The name of it is I Love Thy Kingdom, Lord. I was sitting there as Lee was praying, and I was praying what, what to say about this song. I tried to say a little something about them, and all I, could, all I hear him saying is, you know, I think we've, you know, he's, what I heard him saying, I was going to tell you, is we've got to realize that we are a part of something so much bigger than us. As believers and as a Bible-believing, you know, faith and, and hope in Jesus Christ redeeming us and saving us, we are so much a part of something so big, the big church, universal. And that's what these songs are about, trying to get us ready for these sermons that, that Lee's preaching. And the one today is great. I've, I've heard it once. So... Um, this is I love thy kingdom, Lord. Even if you don't aren't a big singer or think you're not, you know, read the words and let's let's try to sing it together. Though let's stand and sing. I love thy kingdom, Lord, the house of thine abode, the church our blessed redeemer. Bread. Heavenly Father, I am thankful for your kingdom, and I'm thankful that throughout the world, Leesburg Methodist Church is part of the kingdom and the fellowship of God. I just pray blessings over this church, God. You have provided for us in so many ways, and you continue to provide. When there is a need, you have always provided. Maybe not in the way we wanted to, but you provided. Lord, I'm thankful for your generosity, and I'm thankful for the generosity of your people. Bless these gifts now, God. Use them for your kingdom's work. In your name we pray. Amen.
Before the choir sings it special, I, I've never done this, but I want to do this today. This song that we're about to sing, I think, connects wonderful with the idea of what we're called to do and what we're called to be as Christians. But I think it's also what we're called to be as members of God's church. And so I want to say a prayer over this song. Um, and I want you to hear the words as we sing it, okay? Let's pray. God, I just pray right now for the choir as we sing this song, walking humbly with you. Lord, I pray that we would hear the words of this song. You'd be with us as we sing it. Denise, as she directs it. We love you, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. What shall I bring before my God? How shall I bow before you, before the High and Holy One? What is the gift that I would bring you? For all I have is from your hand. And what I need to understand is that your grace was never meant to be repaid. I would bring a thousand offerings if you desire, but you delight in living sacrifice. What you require is to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with you. I just want to say I am thankful for Denise for leading us, um, for being willing to be a part of that. Um, I'm thankful for Miss Elaine, who plays the piano, and Brian, who plays the piano. Um, we have got a lot of volunteers, uh, volunteer a lot of time and effort uh, for the ministry of the kingdom, and I'm just very thankful for them. Now, I want to do some disclaimers as we start this series. The series will actually start next week. Um, we're going to be looking at the membership vows of the Global Methodist Church. We're going to be saying, are these membership vows biblical? Um, and what do they mean? What am I doing? Now, some people would say membership is about numbers. And I think there are churches that worry about that. 
And there are statistical data and other things that you've got to think of when you think of membership. And certainly as we look at the New Testament church, um, there wasn't the Baptist church, the Presbyterian church. Um, all the denominations and things like that have come over the course of time. But in the early church, it was the church of Corinth. It was the church of uh, Colossa. It was the church of Rome. Um, it was God's church in these places, and they were committed to those places where they were. And so I do think there is a biblical understanding of being a part of the church. Um, and today, as we talk about these things and as we renew our vows, I want you to know my heart. My heart is not about growing our church to be this mega church. That, that's not even in my thought process. It's about us renewing our vow to one another first. We are a family of God. And when we make that church membership vow, we are vowing these things that we're going to be a part of this family. So that's first, but that's not the most important. The most important aspect of our church vow is to God. That we are going to be faithful as long as God asks us to be in this place to this church that I'm a part of. Because I do not think when we get to heaven, there's going to be the section for the Methodist. There's going to be a section for the Baptist. I certainly hope that's not the way it is. Because we are a family. We sang one foundation. If Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, if you believe that he is the only way to heaven, if you believe he died on the cross for our sins, if you believe in a God creator, one God, triune parts, then that's who we are. And then you can be Baptist and believe that, Presbyterian and believe that. We have different things that we look at, and you have to decide if you want to be Wesleyan or if you want to be Baptist. Certainly, we look at theologies different in some aspects. And I'm, I am well aware that when I get to heaven, there's going to be some things that I probably got wrong, theologically speaking. But I'm not going to care about those things, right? And so my goal in this sermon series is to renew our hearts, renew our spirits, to look at what we did when we joined the church, and in this new place that we find ourselves, renew those vows so that when we move forward, we move forward understanding who we are, understanding what I have committed to be a part of this church and live into that. Because I think, friends, if every single one of us as church members live into what God has called us to be and do, there's no stopping what God will do through us and in us in this community of faith. Do you believe that? I believe it. So let's look. Let's see. Is church membership, again, not maybe the way we think of membership, but being a member of a church, is that a biblical concept? So I'm going to be looking at different passages today. And I want us to kind of start with 1 Corinthians 1 2. So there's five things that we're going to look at this morning. These aren't the only five uh, things that I think point to the idea of church membership in the early church. But they're, they're big, big ones. And I think that they still pertain to us today as we think about being a member of a church. So 1 Corinthians 1, 2, Paul says in verse 1, we're going to look at 1 and 2, but Paul says, Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brothers and our brother Sothenus to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be his holy people, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Now you find this in 1 Corinthians 1-2, Galatians 1-2, Philippians 1-1, and Romans 1-7, which we just got done. And each one of those letters Paul writes, he is greeting what? The church, that's exactly right. The church, and he makes this kind of parentheses, uh, the parameters around the church, the people who are the people of God, and then the world. And he says um, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be his holy people. So we have stepped out of the culture and society of the day, and we have joined a new family. And, and that's exactly what happens when we ask Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior. And in every denomination that I know of, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, especially if you've never joined the church, you get baptized. And we're going to talk about that in a later sermon. 
what baptism means, which is a universal way for us to stand before people in uh, believer's baptism and say, this is who I am, this is what I'm a part of, this is what I believe, and I'm connected. To be a member of the church in most churches, you need to be baptized. Not for salvation. Uh, You don't have to be baptized to be saved. We'll talk about that. But baptism is a connection that you make publicly in believer's baptism that I am a part of the kingdom of God. Paul makes this distinction in each one of his letters, and he is addressing it to the church. And so, therefore, there's this idea that I am a member of the church. I'm a member of the church in Corinth. I'm a member of the church in in wherever I am. If you remember in chapter 16 of Romans, the last one we looked at, Paul talks about where each one of those people is from. You know, Phoebe is from this church. Uh, Aquila and Priscilla are from this church. It's, it's associating them with the part of the church that they are a member of. You stand, and when somebody asks you, are you a Christian? You're, yeah, where do you go to church? Well, I go to the Leesburg Methodist Church. I go to the, you know, Leesburg Baptist Church. Wherever you're associated with, that's your kind of place of reference. And so I'd ask you, if we believe the membership vows are biblical, if we believe the membership vows call us into these parameters of who we are, when you say I'm a member of the Leesburg Methodist Church, that tells people something. Are we living up to the standard that God has got for us? It's a wonderful question, and I hope it's one that you will ponder and think about for your own life. Are you proud to be a part of the Leesburg Methodist Church? Is it living to the standard that God has set for us? Are we being the people God has called us to be? Those are all questions that we need to think about. So Paul writes to the church and therefore puts these parameters and sets up this place to be the church. Secondly, Paul gives leadership positions within the church which assumes membership. Why would you have leaders in different categories if you didn't didn't have a church body that lived into those, once again, those parameters? So let's look at Hebrews 13, 15 through 18. We can also find this concept in 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 and in 1 Timothy 5, 17, but I want to focus on the Hebrews passage. And we're going to be skipping through different passages, so uh, just you know, kind of go with it. So verse 15 of chapter 13 of Hebrews. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others for which such sacrifices God is pleased. Again, parameters of who we are, the church versus the world. 17, have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. Pray for us. We are sure that we have a clear conscience and desire to live honorably in every way. I get particularly urge you to pray so that I may be restored to you, Paul is saying. So we have these leadership roles, and once again, this kind of associates us with the membership of the church. So Corinth had leaders. Galatia had leaders. Leesburg United Methodist Church had leaders. Leesburg Methodist Church has leaders. One of the things we're going to talk about in church council is do we want to maintain the way we're doing leadership as far as the teams that we have set up? There are different ways that we can run the church. And so, do we want to change the way we're running the church? And we'll talk about that at church council. And so, I hope you'll come and hear and have a, have a discussion in how we do things. Um, some churches have a bunch of different teams. Some churches has one team, and that one team is made up of those different teams, and they run the church. But, again, you call out leaders to kind of put parameters in how we do things here at the Leesburg Methodist Church. So in in other words, if you gave your life to Jesus Christ in this day, you became a member, a part part of the body, we're going to look at in just a moment, of that church. And you were associated by that church that you first became. I am Lee Smith. I came from the church of so-and-so. And why does this matter? 
Because we have this setup where we ask people to join us. And part of our vow is that we are going to be in line with what Scripture teaches. And how we do things in a Wesleyan way. And I do believe the Wesleyan way is a biblical way. And we'll talk about that as we kind of go through our membership vows. And so we have this idea of leadership roles. And it only makes sense that we're members if there are leadership roles. And certainly Jesus himself set up leadership roles when he looked at the disciples' lives. Okay, third. This is an interesting one, but I think it's important. Letters of connection or membership. We often sent, were often sent with followers of Christ to give witness to who they were and that you could trust them. This is an amazing concept, and I think it's important about who we are, and it's one that I don't know that I've ever thought about, but I think it's one that we should think about. Let's turn to Acts 18. Verses 18 through 27. Now, this is a story we kind of briefly hit in Romans chapter 16, if you remember. Remember we talked about Priscilla and Aquila, and we talked about Apollos. This is that story of Apollos, but I want you to catch an important part of this story. All right, verse 18 of chapter 18 of Acts. Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time. Then he left the brothers and sisters and sailed to Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off at Chesrea because of a vow he had taken. They arrived at Ephesus where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. He himself went into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to spend more time with them, he declined. But as he left, he promised, I will come back if it is God's will. Then he set sail for Ephesus. When he landed at Caesarea, he went up to Jerusalem and greeted the church and then went to Antioch. After spending some time in Antioch, Paul sent out from there and traveled from place to place throughout the region of Galatia and Pilgrim, strengthening all the disciples while there. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. Let's stop right here for a second. So Priscilla and Aquila were left behind in Ephesus, and they were doing ministry in the church in Ephesus. Paul is continuing his journey, going from church to church to try to touch base with as many churches as he can. And so we've kind of come back to Priscilla and Aquila and this man, Apollos. He was a learned man, with, and through the knowledge of Scripture, he had been instructed in the way of the Lord. And he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. So remember we talked about Apollos and how Apollos had the the gospel basically of John the Baptist, but he had not heard the gospel of Jesus. And so in this moment, they hear him speaking and they understand he has authority, but he does not have the whole story. And so for these two leaders of the church, they thought to themselves, we can't let him go any further if he does not know the full gospel. And so they bring him home to their house and they sit and they eat with him and they talk to him man what a great lesson for us as church folks one of the greatest ways to get people to come to our church isn't to invite them so to speak that's the first step but i'm telling you if you want people to come to church if you want people to be a part of our church family you know the best way invite them to eat with you invite them to your home talk about what church means to you Get involved in their life. Get to know them more deeply and intimately. When you do those kind of things, you shed light on who you are and more importantly, what your church family is all about. If all we do is invite them, and I would encourage you, take those cards, but don't just say, here, take this card and then leave, right? It's got information on it, but give them something more. This is just a door for you to open up, to get in, to talk to someone, to invite them. And maybe invite them into your life. So when Priscilla and Aquila heard them, they invited him to come to their home. And then verse 27. Listen to this. When Apollos wanted to go to Achaia, the brothers and sisters encouraged him and wrote to the disciples there to welcome him. When he arrived, he was a great help to those by grace who had believed. So in essence, they send a letter of recommendation saying... Basically, Apollos is someone you can trust. 
Apollos is a man of faith. Now, before Priscilla and Aquila met with him, they may not have sent that letter of recommendation because they didn't know. He was preaching something that was not complete. But now he knew it. And if you read the life of Apollos, there's different mentions of him. He does go on to preach the gospel. And many come to know Jesus because of Apollos. So if you think of the life of the church, and, and this is something kind of a new concept that I've thought about, that I should have thought about a long time ago. When I say I'm a, Le- a member of the Leesburg Methodist Church, that says something about me, doesn't it? What I want it to say about me, about you, about anybody that's a member of this church, is that you've been vetted, that people know who you are. You have stood before the mass and you have said, this is what I believe and I am not apologetic of it. And I'm going to live my life. I want you to know that there are times that I'm out, right? Uh, Lori's filled in for me, Joey's filled in for me, Larry's filled in for me, Terry Grinstead is filled in for me. I don't just pick people willy-nilly to fill in the pulpit. As the pastor, as the shepherd of this church, I am the one that is responsible for making sure that whoever stands up here knows who Jesus is, believes the gospel, and they don't teach some crazy thing that's not biblical, right? That's on me. And so I vet, and I know where these people are and where their faith is. I mean, that's the same thing as anything that goes on in the life of the church. If somebody is preaching or teaching in Sunday school something that's not biblical, who's the one that's going to get told that? Me. And if I get told that, I'm going to have a conversation. Because you represent God first, but you also represent Leesburg Methodist Church. And we stand with God and the Bible and what it believes. So if you're saying something that's not, we want to make sure that you understand. Hey, that's not biblical. And we here at this church, we're not going to be doing stuff that's not with God's word. And this is also a biblical thing. This goes to the next point. Jesus had a clear discipline. He had parameters set for his church. Let's turn to Matthew 18, verses 15 through 20. So Apollos went with this letter kind of vetting who he was and what he believed. And you're a member of the church. And you have a part of who we are. We vetted you. And and hopefully when we do this renewing of vows, we're going to renew that spirit. And everybody's going to be willing to follow these vows. And we're going to move forward and be who God's called us to be. But there are times when we step out of where we are or who we are. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew 18, 15 through 20. If your brother or sister sins, actually 15 through 7, If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Man, Jesus is stepping on some toes there, isn't he? What Jesus has just done has established a clear discipline. And when you're a part of a church family, you say in that vow, I'm going to be obedient to God and God's way. And, And I think as we read the vows of the Global Methodist Church, that's exactly what we're saying. Listen, hear me, I'm not so much worried about your vow to the global Methodist church as I am when you make that vow to God. And we need to understand, and this is something our world has lost, that there is a way that God has called us to live. And when I stand up in membership or baptism, I am saying I believe that way. I am saying I'm going to live in those parameters because that's what God has called me to do. And I expect that if I go outside of those parameters, you, my family, should come to me and say, that ain't right. If I preach something up here that is not biblical, I hope you catch me first and say, hey, that wasn't biblical. Friends, that is the parameters by which Jesus lived. That's how he taught the church. In every church where Paul created a church, they lived within those parameters. 
We have been called to be set apart. We have been called to be in the world, but not of the world. When we become members of a church, we fall into that, and we say, I will be under that. One of the things that Wesley taught that was so important for this concept was the idea of class meetings and band meetings. Class meetings were made up of men and women, kind of like a Sunday school with maybe 10 to 15 people. And they taught about the things of the church, and they learned it was kind of like a Sunday school. Then bands were members, were all women or all men, and they were held accountable. And there were probably four to six um, in this group. And every day, every time they meet, they would ask questions. Is it right with your soul? Have you done anything you'd be ashamed of? What sins have you committed? These questions were questions that me and you may think about and go, what? Like, I can remember the first time I was a part of accountability group in college. And I sat down, and I was a preacher's kid. Grew up in church my whole life. And people started confessing things, and I was like, holy cow. What, what am I part of? But in those moments, I also began to understand I wasn't the only one that struggled with this or struggled with that. And I had brothers that were struggling with the same things I was struggling with. And we could talk about and pray for one another, hold each other accountable. I mean, that's the parameters of discipline that falls in the life of the church. Listen, as a Christian, you don't need to be afraid of discipline. You need to be thankful for it. I am so thankful when the Holy Spirit disciplines my heart. Do you understand what that feels like? You know what I'm talking about. If you've ever done something you shouldn't do and there's something inside of you and they're saying, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have said to that. You shouldn't have looked at that. If, if, if that's your life, if, if you've got that feeling inside of you, praise God. That's the accountability of the Spirit in your life. And that's the discipline that God has put in us and around us as the church. And so Jesus talks about this. He lifts it up. Finally, the church membership is equated to the body, different members of the body. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 24. Again, this is a, a one we've heard of before, but I think it's one that shows um, the importance of a church body, the membership. All right, let's look at it. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 24. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts from one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body. Whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many. Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body." Verse 21, the eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lack it, so that there should be no division in the body, that it is parts should have equal concern for each other. Man, church, if that doesn't put a parameter on what the church was in Jesus' day and how important it is for us today. Some of you are noses, some of you are ears, some of you are hands, some of you are feet. Where would we be without them? We'd be lost, right? Listen, hear me today. I don't think you have to be a member of a church to be a Christian. But I can't think of, for the life of me, why you wouldn't want to be. We have made church 
about us as individuals. And friends, it's just not about that at all. It's about our likes, about what, our, what we want. It's about our needs. That's not what church is about. It's about Jesus. It's about the family. It's about learning to give and take. It's about learning to cooperate with people that are much different than me. Like there are things Lori has that I don't have. And if I didn't have Lori, I would miss on those things. And so would you. Friends, each one of us have a different part to play, but we are vital to the life of this church. When I became your pastor, I didn't join this church. Because at the time in the United Methodist Church, and this is the same way in the Global Methodist Church, I am a member of the conference. Because we are an itinerant church, pastors can be moved. Now, in the Global Methodist Church, they don't want to move pastors, which is a good thing. I think churches need pastors to stay longer. But if it ever came time, I would move to another Global Methodist Church, so my membership is with, but I make my vows just like you do. Now, some churches think that if you get the pastor, you get the wife for free, right? But she is in the same place as any of y'all. Krista is a member of the Leesburg Methodist Church. She's not a member of the conference. She's not on staff. She's the preacher's wife, yep. And I know that holds a different kind of thought, but she's just like you. And when, I was a, when she was, went through confirmation, she became a member of this church. And she came to this church, and she became a member of the Leesburg Methodist Church. Then she uh, married this crazy guy, and I wasn't a pastor at the time, so me and her both joined the Douglas First Methodist Church. Then I became a pastor, and we moved to Plains and Preston, so I became a member of the conference. But you know what she did? She joined the Plains and Plains Church, because we were on a charge. She joined the Plains Church, and she was a member of the Plains Church. We left Plains and Preston and came to Leesburg, and guess what she did? She joined the church again here in Leesburg. Why did she do that? Because for our family, church membership matters. For our family, we made a vow, and we're going to hold those vows. And to the best of our ability, we're going to be here, we're going to be a part of the ministry of the church, and we're going to work in it because we're a part of your family, and you're part of ours. And we want to support you, and we want to be here for you if we can. But above that, we want to be there for God. And we want to be a part of the work that the church is doing. So when we think of church membership, I think it is a biblical concept. And I think it is much better for us to join a church, whether it's this church, that church, wherever, be a part of that family of faith. In boldness, just like you did if you were baptized, stand up and say, this is who I am. This is the vow that I make. I will be faithful. Now listen, I think that faithfulness is to God. And so if we're ever part of a church that falls away from that, then the church has fallen away and we remain faithful to God. That's how I see things. But I think that this time, this sermon series, is a time for you to pray, for you to think through who you are and what you are. I'm excited. I've already been talking to people about joining on October the 29th. And I hope we have multiple people that want to join this church for the first time. And not because I want to add numbers. But because I want you to be a part, legally I guess you could say, of the family of faith. But also on that day, I am going to renew my vows as a member of God's church. And I'm going to live into what God is calling me to be and do. And I hope you'll do the same thing. I hope you will stand and read those vows. And I hope you will promise to be who God's called you to be. Because can you imagine what God would do through a church that is living into their vows for him and for the kingdom? I think it would be unstoppable. In fact, you know what I would love to see? I would love to see us filling up these churches so that we could split and maybe there's a place in Lee County that doesn't have a church. How awesome would it would be if we were so full, we could get together and we could say, listen, are there anybody willing to go start a church over there? I mean, who wants to be a mega church when there are people who need to know Jesus, right? That's what he's calling us to do and be, to be people who share the good news 
about who Jesus Christ is. We do that outside of ourselves as we listen to the calling of Christ in our life. So, if you decide not to be a member of the church, does that mean that we're kicking you out? Huh? No! Say that with me. No! Okay, good. So don't hear the preacher. The preacher said we can't be here if we don't become members. No, we just established that. I hope you will, though. I hope you'll become a member. Because I can't imagine what God is going to do. And I feel in my heart and soul that he's going to do something special in this church. I really do. And I can't wait to see what it is. So I hope you'll pray for this new series. Hope you'll be a part of it. Hope you'll invite folks. And then I hope on that day, in your heart, you'll stand, renew your vows as we move in this new place that God's calling us. Amen? All right, as the praise band comes and lead us in our closing song, um, let's prepare our hearts for an invitation. A heart of worship. Maybe you're out there and you're saying, you know what? I can't even remember what my vows were. They were so long ago. I want to pay attention to each vow. And I want to be able to stand up on October the 29th and with all that I am, say those vows and live into them. I want to get baptized. Maybe I've never been baptized. Maybe I've not made that vow before the, the congregation. I want to do that. I want to get baptized. Maybe you've never been a member of a church and you want to become a member. I don't know. I just want God to speak to your heart and life. I want to speak to mine as we move into this place. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come now for this time of invitation, Lord, we are coming back to a heart of worship. Basically, what that says is we're coming back to your heart. Lord, I just pray that in this moment that we would be prepared for this season that we come into. A season of renewal. A season of making a promise. A season of seeing you grab a hold of us as we seek to be the people you've called us to be. Lord, I believe that church membership is a biblical concept. Maybe not the way we do things, but I think being a part of the church is important. So I pray, Lord, that you'd speak to us and that we would walk in, in any way that you lead us to do so. Be with us now. In your precious name we pray. Amen. It's all about
King of endless words, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear, you're looking into my You know why the guy wrote that song? He was a worship leader, and he had made worship the object of worship, right? That's something we as human beings do a lot of. And maybe that's what I'm trying to say with this idea of membership. So many times we've made membership about us, like we're becoming a member of a country club, right? We have certain rights. I want you to hear me. Becoming a member of a church has nothing to do with rights. In fact, it has what we've given up. I've become a member of church to show that I've given up who I am, to become a part of who we are together in Christ. So this is what this is about, renewing our vow. Maybe we made membership something and it was never meant to be. Maybe we didn't do anything with it, right? It's like picking up a, an invite card and throwing it in my car. I picked it up, but I didn't do anything with it. We are called, I believe, by God to become connected with churches. And we make a vow, not so much to the denomination, but to God. And we live in to that vow through being a part of the family of faith. That's where we're going. That's what we're going to be looking at. And I can't wait to see what God does with us. Amen? Amen. Pay attention to the bulletin and the different things coming up. We've got a lot going on. I hope you'll be a part of those things. Let's pray. Lord, as we leave this place today, I am thankful for your people. I'm thankful for visitors we have, for non-members, for members alike. Lord, I just pray that you speak through us, to us, through um, this new sermon series that you've laid on my heart. Lord, help us to be faithful to you. Help us to hear you clearly. Be with us, Lord, this week. Help us to have opportunities to use that invite card to talk to somebody about what it means to be a part of a church family. We love you, Father. Keep us safe until we return next week. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. You are